The failure of issue one getting voted down in Ohio could signal what's to come in the battle over the state's abortion rights in November. I'm joined now by former Ohio State Senator and 21 News political analyst Capri Cafaro to learn more about what she thinks could be next and really get her thoughts on the high turnout in Tuesday's special election. Thank you for being here, Capri. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, what do you make of the big turnout? We saw a lot of voters. This is not a governor's race year. This is not a presidential yeah. race year. And we were seeing quite significant numbers for an off election year. 57% was the no vote for issue one. It went down last night pretty quickly. What were your thoughts on that? And what do you think this could signal? Well, you know, you are absolutely right, Lindsay. This was a really high turnout, particularly for an August special election. Well over a million Ohioans went to the polls and cast their votes uh, for this. And, and I think what this means is that, you know, first of all, for any of the folks that were speculating that an August uh, you know, election, special election, was going to um, fly under the radar and not catch the, the, the interest of Ohioans and things would just fly through were obviously sorely mistaken. I think that people really were coming in, in this case, uh, I think very well educated on the potential implications. And people don't like to get you know their rights potentially taken away. And I would assume given how much um, of a, a spread this was, 57%, yeah. I thought it would be closer. I think that people are not only you know wanting to protect, you know, maybe have that conversation about the reproductive rights in the fall. But I think more importantly, they don't want their ability to be able to change the Constitution from the citizen's perspective curtailed. And I think maybe that's what this was really about. Yeah, they want to hold on to their voting power and their voting rights. Um, when you look at the abortion amendment that's coming up in November, it is different than what we have in place now. Right now, Ohio has the heartbeat bill. It's six months, mm -hmm. and that's the max in terms of being accessible to an abortion. They want to change that with the amendment coming up. It's closer to 23 mm -hmm. weeks, and it's up to a doctor to determine um, some of mm -hmm. the choices there. I'm wondering if you think that that is really what's gearing a lot of voters up. Do you think that the heartbeat bill seems too restrictive for voters? We saw you know, voters on both sides of the aisle, some of them also voting against issue one. Yeah, no, and, and this did become a bipartisan issue. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, with a number of counties, you know, being at 70 percent uh, voting no, for example, this really ended up being a bipartisan issue more than I think people expected. Uh, you know, I, the interesting thing about the heartbeat bill is when I, when I was in the legislature, um, both the Republican controlled Senate as well as uh, you know, the, the Republican governor at the time were not particularly keen on signing the heartbeat bill into law. Now, granted, things have changed with the Dodds decision. At the time, there was a lot of conversation when I was in office about it being uh, litigated and, and unconstitutional and those sort of things. That obviously has changed. But I think that, you know, there's no question that that conversation around reproductive rights uh, had to have, have motivated some voters to go out there to ensure that when that ballot initiative came forward, that it wouldn't be more restrictive um, and have a higher threshold at 60 percent to be able to pass. On the flip side, though, there are those that were for issue one and the argument there within some of their commercials, they said that that fertility treatment language could be interpreted as not being able to stop transgender treatment for minors. Do you think that that argument is still going to remain in the headlines? We're going to hear more about that point, even though there are independent doctors out there that have said, hey, we don't think Think it'd be interpreted that way or attorneys. Uh, do you still think that we're going to hear more? Uh, sure. I mean, there's no question that the issue of parental rights and and the transgender issues are going to continue to be bantered about. Look, it was in all of these commercials and, it, you know, through for issue one and there was not a peep about it, um, you know, in, in the conversation about issue one. So there's, you know, this has become this issue of, um, you know, transgender treatment, particularly for children, uh, has become a real lightning rod in the culture wars of recent day. And so I think we can anticipate a continued continued dialogue, conversation, and ads, particularly around that issue. Um, oh, yeah. So I think that, again, uh, the Ohioans are really going to have to educate themselves, and I'm sure that outlets like yours will have experts on, as you mentioned, legal experts, medical experts, um, and people need to do their individual due diligence to see what the potential implications are of this uh, amendment, because it is a constitutional amendment.
amendment that would protect these rights in the Constitution. It would supersede state law and it would make it basically impossible for the General Assembly to enact laws that would um, be against uh, something that's in the Constitution. All right, Capri Cafaro, thank you for joining us as always on this as the battles just now, I think, really starting to heat up. We saw it reflected yep. in that turnout. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank